In this lecture, I will explore DHCP server settings within PFSense covering topics such as DHCP lease, address pool reservation, and options. I will demonstrate how to configure the DHCP server to dynamically allocate IP addresses to client devices on your network and discuss advanced DHCP configuration for specific use cases. So I'll go back here to PFSense and in PFSense, if you see on the top menu services, in services, we have DHCP related services. And in same way, if you go to status, so you will be able to see the DHCP leases. All these leases will be available here. So whatever leases have been provided, you can see these are the IP addresses which are assigned to my devices. And if you see, these are the MAC addresses, which are the hardware addresses of the devices. And against that, the IP address is provided. And it has automatically directed the host name to some of the devices. Though It also shows us the start time and end time. Start time is the start of lease and end time means the end of lease. It provided the IP address to this device on 25th April 2024 and the end lease is 25th April 2024 but the time is here you can see 719 to 919. So for two hours it will assign the lease. You can change the lease time also. I'll show you that as well and I'll show you all other details. Let us go back to the services and we'll talk about the DHCP server. Now, if you notice, these are the IP addresses. This IP address is in fact IPv4 or IP version 4. This class which I'm using is the class C IP address and the range is for the local networks, which means that this IP address will not conflict with any public IP address. This can be provided within the computers on the network. So internally, you have to create the private IP addresses. And if we talk about private IP addresses, there are some of the IP addresses in all the A, B and C classes which can be used as a private IP addresses depending upon the size of your network. If your size of network is small, you can go with class C IP address. If size of network is bigger, you can go with the class B IP address. And if it is extremely big, you can go with the class A IP address. So all these classes I have explained you and I have explained you what is the network bit and what is the host bit and how you can configure the subnet of any network. Through subnet also, you can have more devices. Here with this particular IP address, I will be having 254 IP addresses or 254 devices because these three are the network addresses and the last bit is the host address bit. So in host address bit, I can have maximum 255 addresses here. As you can see, available range is 192.168.240.1 and up to 254, which means that I can have maximum 254 addresses on this particular network. So if your network is larger, you can go with the different network bits. So the range which I have configured here that I don't want to give the IP addresses from 192.168.240.2 because one is already provided to the DHCP. If you go back here to interfaces and LAN interface, you can see here that I already provided one IP address to this particular device, which is 192.168.240.1. And here you can see I'm able to access this using this IP address. So now all remaining IP addresses are from 192.168.240.2 till 192.168.240.254. 255 cannot be used. That is broadcast address. So we'll go back here to DHCP server. Now you can see here that the range which I have given, I, I can of course give the range from 192.168.240.2 till 192.168.240.254. But I'll be using some of the IP addresses manually on my network and uh, uh, some of the IP addresses will be used for the servers. Some of the IP addresses will be used for the devices. So I will be giving this particular range to all the devices that need the dynamic IP address like for example smartphones or laptops or desktops that will be coming to my network and they will get the IP address and next time they may not come back or next time when they come I don't want them to get the same IP address again so that's why I'll be giving this particular range so this means that from 100 to 200 I have 100 devices that can be connected on this particular range once you are done with the configuration you will go down here and save it now if you go here down there are various other settings that can be done here. So we can do the additional pool here, but I'll be discussing that in the next videos. So here is the Win server. Of course, Win server is the old method or old devices or old service, which is providing the names to the IP addresses. 
So for that purpose, we have been using WINS, but now the devices are not using WINS server. Now the devices are using the DNS server. DNS server is domain name server, which means that, for example, if I go to google.com, so google.com is in fact a domain name and it has in fact the IP address, which means that it is connected to or a link to an IP address. So these name servers or DNS servers, these names are managed by the DNS server. For example, if I go to command line here and if I ping google.com, you will see here that the IP address of google.com is this 192.178.24.238. This is the IP address of the google.com. And if I try to open this particular IP address on my browser, it will open google.com, which means that some server or some service is in fact recognizing that and providing me the IP address. That is the job done by the DNS server. DNS server is domain name system server. So there are multiple servers. PFSense itself is also working as a DNS server. So if I leave these DNS settings blank, what will happen that the PFSense will provide the IP address and the DNS server automatically from DNS server of its own DNS. If I go here to interfaces, and WAN interface, you will see here that the IPv4 configuration for the WAN interface is configured as DHCP. So this DHCP server is also working as a DNS server for PFSense. So PFSense DNS server is the WAN interface and our DNS servers or for the devices on this particular DHCP will be the same. So IP version 4 or the gateway is 192.168.240.1 and the DNS server is also 192.168.240.1 until we explicitly mention DHCP server. The IP addresses provided by this particular DHCP server will get the default DNS server. So if I show you here, command prompt, if I show you here IP config slash all, my IP address is 192.168.240.102 and the default gateway is 192.168.240.1, which is the PFSense IP address. If you notice here, 240.1 is the IP address of the PFSense and also if I see here the DNS server is 192.168.240.1. I also have a DNS server on my network which is 192.168.240.6 which is Pihole. So Pihole is one of the DNS servers here on my network which is helping me to stop all the malicious websites or to block the ads and if I show you here any website when I open so if you see here, this website is displaying the ads and what Pihole will do, Pihole will stop these ads. I'll be explaining you in detail uh, what is the Pihole and what is the DNS. Here I'll be talking about DHCP. So for this DHCP, if I don't want to provide DNS server as 192.168.240.1, I want DHCP server to provide the IP addresses in this range, but the DNS server should be 192.168.240.6, which is Pihole address. I'll simply save it now and the moment I save it, if I go back and reconfigure my IP address, so which I'll do IP config slash release and IP config slash renew. I got connected again and if I see now the IP address, it will be IP config slash all and now you will notice here that DNS server is 192.168.240.6 and my IP address is 192.168.240.102 because lease was already there. So I again got the same IP address, but my DNS server is changed now. Why the DNS server is changed? Because I told PFSense that whenever you provide the IP address, provide this DNS server to all the devices on the network. Of course, I can control this also, which I will explain you in the next video that how you can provide different DNS servers to different IP addresses or different ranges. So we can control that as well. And then is Umapi. Umapi is for the advanced users. It's an object management application programming interface. If you remove the addresses or objects programmatically, you can do that using Umapi, which is object management application programming interface. We will leave this option blank. But in case you want to use that, you will be able to use that. Here is the gateway. In case your PFSense is not a gateway, it's just a DHCP server and there is another device on the network which is working as a gateway, you can provide that. Otherwise, if you leave this blank, your DHCP server will also work as a gateway, which is fine. I want to use that. 
and then is the domain name in case you have a different domain controller on your network so you'll be providing the domain name of that controller otherwise you will leave it blank it will take the domain name from your dhcp server so in case you are using dyne dns i'll explain you that also here is the mac address control which i explained you that if you want to deny or allow specific addresses you can mention them here with the comma and all the devices which are mentioned here as i mentioned if you go here on top and if you allow known clients from any interface so you will choose this and here in the mac allow addresses you will mention all the mac addresses for the devices that you want to allow and you will deny all the addresses which you don't want to allow so if you leave this blank and deny only the devices so then so you will do allow all clients and you will only deny those which are to be denied here so we'll be leaving this blank i'll not be making any changes i allow all the devices but if you want to use the mac filtering you can do that as well ntp is network time protocol server in case you are using any ntp on your network you will be choosing that otherwise you will leave it blank so it will take the default ntp server in case you want the devices to synchronize the time on your network you can do that as well otherwise you will leave this blank tftp server i have explained you in a different video how the tftp server works if you have any tftp server on your network where boot online can work and that i have explained you in a video that how you can use that ldap server if you are using active directory for the user authentication so you can mention that network booting in case you have the network booting enabled on your network you will be enabling the network booting here and you will provide the next server and netbios i have explained you that in the netboot.xyz video you will see that in detail and here is additional dhcp options you can add additional dhcp options so once everything is done so you will simply save it now your dhcp server is configured and ready and it will provide the ip addresses on the network as i mentioned that this dhcp server is service which is running on the network on top you can see here these are the options here this is to restart the service this is to stop the service and here you will be able to see the uh, the status of the service and here you will see related log entries so if i click here you will see all the log related to the dhcp server so you will understand that that yes dhcp is working it, it provided the ip address to this particular device recently and this was the ip address provided all the history for the dhcp the communication is being taken place you will see that in the dhcp log so here i'll go back to the services and i'll go back to dhcp server so you will see dhcp server details over here so this was all about the dhcp configuration 